for all of that. Alan Quinlan, good morning to you. Morning, lads. How are you? Something about the sight of a monster back row from Tipperary in a Leinster jersey that gets the gets the juices flowing. Yeah, well, we had uh, there was a, a lot of chat this week on our, our WhatsApp group about um, about Leams signing and joining the Leinster senior senior group. Uh, it's it's a strange one, isn't it? Um, is it? Uh, well, it is, I suppose it is a, li- a little bit, uh, but it's not. It's not. Um, it's just the way the game has gone. Um, obviously, over the years, lots of um, lots of Leinster fellas have come and signed for Munster from a player's point of view. Um, few have gone the other way. Not not too many. Uh, John Fogarty, Stephen Kyo, Trevor Hogan, all Tipperary men. I heard you the other day talking about Tipperary making Tipperary Leinster. That was Jared. Um, yeah. <laughs> I oh, just that was Jerry. Sorry, Jerry. It was Grace that Adam was not. Yeah. Swapping oh, awfully. I mean, that's maybe that bit is fair enough. <laughs> what was the yeah, What Jesus. was the WhatsApp group saying, Quinny? Was it? Yeah. Give us as much <laughs> as you can. <laughs> what, 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 what was it saying? I think um, I think that uh, I think people would read between the lines there. But was it? Uh, it was. It was congratulating Dennis uh, personally. No, it was it all it personal. Was, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was saying, "What is this guy doing?" Look at this! What is happening in the no, three jerseys? No, look. I think if you look at all the the, the ex monster guys who are coaching in different clubs around Europe, deep down, in an ideal scenario, and it's the same as any Leinster guys if they play for such a long time. Um, deep down, you you'd love to be in a sense be back at your own team and involved there and back in your own surroundings. But that's professional sport and. Um, the the opportunities sometimes aren't there. A lot of the times they're not there. People have to go away. Um, for Dennis, I think the opportunity presented himself a couple of years ago to to get involved as a, an elite development officer with Leinster, which very shrewd move from them because I just think uh, good. Obviously, players with big careers and good careers don't automatically make great coaches, yeah. but there's a certain level of knowledge and experience that. There has to be a benefit for for having them involved, particularly with youngsters. First, first of all, um, there's obviously less pressure, and and you're not judged as harshly. You still have got to make improvements, and you know Leinster's underage system and development is is very strong. So I'm sure they they scrutinise that, and and Dennis would have impressed there and done really well. But it's it's very, it's just the way professional sport has gone. So he got the opportunity, and and. Why wouldn't he? If any of us think about it, um, you know, you can't go. Well, I'm a monster man, and I'm not going to be involved with my my biggest rivals. Um, if you've five offers on the table from five professional teams, um, then maybe you we, the, the WhatsApp group would have an argument and say, Leams, why why didn't you take the the you know the Connacht job, the Ulster job, the Harlequins job, or the Leicester job, or a job in France, but. Because Leinster um, are better than any of those teams as well, Quinny, is the thing. No, it's not necessarily that they're better. It's uh, <laughs> it's that he's been working with them and he can still live at home. He commutes up and down, stays a couple of nights in Dublin. And, well, come here, listen, all, all uh, of this, right, the elephant in the room is suggesting that on some level, Dennis Leamy doesn't want to be there. No, not <laughs> at all. I think you, it, it, it's not suggesting that. I'm, I'm saying that if I was in that situation... Um, You've got to look after yourself. And this is an incredible opportunity to work with one of the top, potentially the top team in Europe, um, who are the most consistent over the last kind of six, seven years um, from a European point of view. Conveyor belt of players coming through. And, you know, we've had lots of coaches come from abroad to Munster when I was there. And, you know, Jim Williams, Tony McGahan, uh, Alan Gaffney, I know he was with Leinster beforehand. And they all went back and they coached Australia. So, you can't look at it and say, well, they're my, my rivals. We'll have a bit of slagging about it. But genuinely, um, I, I just think Leams is an incredible fella. Um, yeah. He was an incredible player. He was a great leader. He wasn't the most vocal of guys, but he had incredible respect amongst the group. And he just goes about his business. Um, and I'm sure he's doing the same as a coach. Um, you know, he's had to, you know, cut his teeth uh, coaching Cashel and Rockwell and Clonmel. Um it's an incredible and CV. Think, it's, it's like the CV, Quinny, no, of somebody, somebody who, had no, who, had, who didn't have half the profile of playing career. Well, you yeah. see, the, the profile sometimes helps. Um, you look at, you know, I, I always compare and I always say this to, to, to about Mike Prendergast. Mike, 
didn't have the same CV as Rog, but Mike ended up in Grenoble and uh, Oyana, um, Stade Francais, Racing gets the dream job, kind of, you know, real bit of structure and, and security with Racing with a four year contract there two years ago. And, you know, they're knocking on the door, French for, top 14 and, and, and um, you know, on Europe as well. So some guys, the CV as a player doesn't, um, it's a little bit unfair sometimes. You know, Leams went the other way. He was re respectfully to the junior rugby and schools rugby. He was right down at the bottom mm. um, learning and, and, and doing that. And then, you know, obviously when he went into the Leinster system, he obviously impressed and um, it's it's a wonderful opportunity for him. Let's be fair about it. And, and it couldn't happen to a better fella. I think he's incredible respect um, amongst all, all of us that he played with. He was always someone you looked across at and knew that the work was done. Um, he was going to give 100% in everything he did. Um, and he just turned up week after week and, and was just a real kind of uh, vibrant and energetic person. Not vocally, but yeah. he was, he was, uh, he's just an incredible, incredible guy. And uh, he's Leinster, he'd be a massive boost to them. Of course, it's it's a different challenge when you step up, and it's the same for any of the ex monster players. You know, Fla went to Harlequins last year, um, did remarkably well after a tough time in Munster. Felix went and went and wor wor being involved in a World Cup win with South Africa after a tough time with Munster. So it doesn't go automatically go go to plan. Um, Rog is probably the, the the only one who's that incredible upward trajectory, um, which is. It's going to be different for him this year being a head coach, but um, coaching is tough and Dennis will be under a lot of pressure there and he'll have to deliver. But obviously, um, just like I said, it doesn't guarantee you're being a successful coach to player, but I just, I'd be amazed if Dennis Leamy wasn't, didn't make an impact and inspire guys around him. Um, he has an incredible presence about him for someone who's, who's not the, you know, the most vocal and, they'll respect him because he's been there and done that at, an, at, at, at the top level. It's uh, great to see some love between Leinster and Munster and that was one of the themes of the week, Gordon Darcy in the Irish Times this week and indeed on Off The Ball actually on, on Monday Night Rugby uh, has been one of the more uh, glowing voices on Munster as a result of their performances so far in the URC. Uh, he said that Gavin Coombs can represent a new Munster that can end barren run, that he thinks the time is now for this Munster team to win silverware and that it might well happen this season. I, is that the mood generally when you've been talking to people this week, Alan, that things have got off to a really good start for Munster and that, that this is the year for them to finally end that barren run? I don't know. Um, it's, it's um, I think if to get everyone fit um, and playing well, they have potential for sure, but, um, and there'd be a handful for anybody um, if they have all those players fit and available to them. But, you know, getting off the, off the ground running, um, it's very early days, you know, it's very early days in this championship. They played two South African teams who have, have uh, you know, have their own challenges, being on the road, new competition, all that kind of stuff. We've seen moments, really good moments. The last try Zebra scored against the Sharks was was incredible. Um, and I heard Graham Rountree speaking about it during the week. And, it, you know, you have to, you know, it's it's... When you hear the coach, a coach talking like that, because you know that last try was superb. Would they have scored it before? Who knows? But I think the ambition to keep the ball alive there and, and the last try from Zebo was was superb. Um, they certainly had in their best forty minutes against the Stormers in the first half last week. I had no issue with them putting the ball up the jumper and, and getting the job done in the second half last week. You, um, you know, you've got a. You've got to figure out how to win a game when you're when you're on the back foot when things are going wrong like that. So um, there's 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 always expectation and there's always pressure and I think it's probably heightened more so this year because there's been a few the last number of years there's been disappointments when they've got to the knockout stage. But look, it'd be great if they could um, and if they guess, you know, if I was to name a team now their best team, I think you'd go. That's that's a pretty strong side. Um, will there be weaknesses and deficiencies in, in one or two areas? Of course there will. Um, you know, I think the front row is an area where Leinster have a lot of depth and uh, compared to Munster, and maybe we keep comparing them because they're the biggest rivals, but um, 
you know, there's a couple of areas that if they get injuries, they're, they're, it, it could be issues for them. But, of course, they have the potential to do that. And uh, But, you know, it's a different kind of challenge this week now. They go away to the Scarlets, you know. That's, that'll be interesting to see how they cope with that and, um, and, and, and if they can get a result there. Since you were on with us on Monday, the Jake White comments around Connacht, Andy Friend has had a say in it. He said uh, they were ill-informed, frustrating, and that Connacht was a lot more than a bunch of Leinster players trying to get contracts, which, of course, it is uh, a lot more than that. And uh, like the job that he's done and that Pat Lam has done and everything that Connacht stands for. Um, but having said all of that, was there not just an element of Jake White pointing the, like picking at the scab of the thing that we all know is like the problem child in the parlance of another sport of Irish rugby anyway and that that um yeah that he was kind of just pointing out the bleeding obvious that that maybe we should put back on the menu and the agenda a little bit more yeah look you can take it as being disrespectful um is there some truth in it of course there is um should he have said it well it was quite stupid stupid thing to say given he was just about to go out and play this side and um, and he gave them a bit of an edge and a bit of a chip on their shoulder to to, to kind of prove them wrong. Um, but, you know, Connacht have, uh, and I think Andy Friend has done a great job there. They're always going to be up against it with depth, quality, um, and and having to mix and match and maybe go into the market and sign players that, that maybe don't cost as much as South African World Cup winners and stuff like that, and finance themselves a little bit differently. Um, is, is there is there maybe, ever a chance to take that point to the end, Quinny, like the stadium gets redeveloped and whatever? Is there ever a chance that they're competing at the level of Munster and Leinster and Ulster? I think there is, and they have to believe there is. Um, obviously, the, the, the success of Munster and Leinster in Europe, you get judged on that. Um, the Pro 14 win in 2016 was an incredibly important um, win for, for Connacht um, to kind of change the perception a bit. Um, I think they've got to have a run in Europe. They've got to be getting the quarterfinals, semifinals. And it's difficult sometimes when, you know, you you, you have players who are not making it in Leinster. You have players who, who weren't making it in Munster. Um, he's got to do his business a little bit differently, Andy Friend. And um, you know, will 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 a World Cup player? You know, it's of course it will. If they get the stadium done, I think increase the capacity, fill the place out every week. Um, they make a stronger argument for sure. But I think they've made massive progress. You know, genuinely. You know, when I played against Connacht back in the day, you know, back in the two thousands and. It was always a really difficult place to go, but, you know, were they just... It, it kind of remind me back when I started playing with Munster, you know, when you played a big English team at Tolman Park in a European game, we probably didn't believe that we were going to win a Euro... We didn't believe we were going to win a European Cup, but we were going to... We were incredibly difficult to beat at home. And and to become successful, you've got to get results. That, that helps us. And sometimes, you know, squad depth and um, actually top class international quality makes a huge difference to that so um they're developing a lot of good players but they've got to hold on to them and really build on that in the next couple of years and 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 get a real good run in europe yeah i one thing i want to ask you about uh, before we let you off you've been sitting down with uh, stuart lancaster for a documentary in virgin media upcoming give us the plug yeah it's on sunday night in virgin media the last six seven months i've i've gone out uh, chatting to different people about um you know, mental health and the importance of mental health. And uh, I spoke to Conor Whelan, um, and not just in sport, I think in real life as well. I, I, I spoke to people who have no involvement in sport, who who have been affected by suicide in their families. Um, I spoke to Mark Smith, the clinics, clinical psychologist who works with Rugby Players Ireland, just about the uptake of rugby players using the services um, and and availing of services there around their mental health and pressures and stresses that they have. Um, and I had a great chat with Stuart Lancaster, which was, he's just intriguing to chat to about what happened to him in 2015 and and after the World Cup with England um, and how that, that affected him and, and how he kind of rebuilt himself to come back and 
just his take on, 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 on mental health, because I know there's obviously a perception sometimes from people who are not affected by mental health um, that, you know, mental health is for people who are down their luck and just have issues and adversity. But there's, there's lots of people who are in successful positions and, and places in sport in particular who are struggling to deal with the pressures and has a real negative effect in their life. Mm. We've seen that over the years with with um, high profile suicides in sport. Um, but it's a societal thing, Adrian, I think. And, you know, given with what happened with COVID and everything, um, there's some real life hard hitting stories in the documentary. And my only goal in doing it was not for financial gain or any sort of glory because there's none, there's none of that involved for me. Um, was to talk to people who've been really deeply affected and what we can do as a society um, and what sports people can do to kind of inspire people in their communities and, and speak up if they are struggling a little bit. So I'm very nervous about it because, um, you know, I've done lots of interviews over the years, sporting interviews. This is a totally different new ball game. And, um, you know, I sit down with a family in in Carrick and Shore, whose son at 16 committed suicide in 2012. Um, he was a big Monster rugby fan and Thomas Kennedy was his name and the family asked for me to go and speak to them um, at the time, which was incredibly strange and difficult thing for me to do because, you know, I'm not qualified to talk to someone about that stuff. Um, so I sat in the kitchen a month after their son committed suicide and just kind of listened and sympathized with them. Um, and I wanted to go back and see what their lives were like now. So I went back nine years later and was sitting in the same kitchen talking to to David and Helen Kennedy and Carrot and Shore about their son and the effects of it and what they think as a society we can do to to stop this. Yeah. Well, look, you've been a powerful voice on it over the last few years. I'm really looking forward to it. Virgin Media on uh, Sunday night, I think you said, was it? Yeah, it's Sunday night at nine o'clock. Sunday yeah. night, nine o'clock. Make an appointment to watch that. Uh, I'm I'm fascinated to know what's in that WhatsApp group, so I'll be giving you a shout afterwards, and we'll uh, we'll pick that conversation. I'll, I'll send you I'll send you some screenshots. I do okay. do lash them on. Come on, thanks, Quinny. Cheers, lads. Thanks.